talk about the Ventra XT from Valco. You can see a picture of it here. This is the next generation controller that's just now hitting a uh, production runs are going out and, and shipping as of a week or two ago. Had a couple little hiccups in some of the production components just due to the state of the world that we live in, but uh, the first units for production are out and in the field and more shipping next week and more are on order already. Beta units have been out for a good long time, so we're, we're very comfortable with this. The nice thing about the Ventra XT and the whole genesis of it is that we're taking all of the operating system and all of the logic and all of the, the ventilation principles of the existing Ventra Pro, and we're just giving it a few tweaks and a, a facelift, at, mostly to the user interface to make it a lot more user friendly, as well as adding some nicer perks to it. So walking through the unboxing of it, as it were, what to expect. We'll kind of talk about hardware. We'll talk about some of the screens. We'll talk about alarm functionality, comparisons to controls in general, specifically comparisons to kind of how it's different from the Venture Pro. And then we'll we'll get into that hands-on. So it really is just a, a, an improvement and a step up from the Venture Pro, um, but it's the same core logic that's handling the ventilation and all of the interlocks and all of the abilities to um, you know take the data in from the inputs and convert that to really good air and ventilation in the barns for the animals that we're raising. The menu guide and the headings are the same as well. So everything as far as where the output channels are, where the control set points are, how minimum vent works and the purge settings are all still the same, just presented in a much easier format than the old two by 40 line display of the Venture Pro. Um, and then biggest change is that the on screen, now that we have the seven inch you know, VGA touchscreen, most of the buttons that you are used to using, although they still exist over on the side here, uh, all of those buttons have also moved on screen. So everything for controlling this can be done on screen, which brings the, the biggest kind of interactive change to it that you'll notice is that all of the hotkeys are now on the screen. So before every one of these channels that have the toggle switches, which still do in the little on off auto and the light telling you if it's running or not, those are all still there. But whereas previously, because of the limitations of the small screen we had, these were membrane switch buttons as well. So if I wanted to get to you know tunnel fan number one, which was on channel one settings quickly, I could press the, the little fight button right here and it would take me to it. Now I can press the button on the screen and it will take me to the same place. Um, so that's that's the biggest interactive change that people will notice between the Pro and the XT. Big plus though, is that most of the hardware internal to it is the same. There's a couple different pieces in there, but as far as being able to uh, have a dealer stock these parts, if they're stocking parts for the Venture Pro, they've already got the majority of the parts for the Venture XT. So there's not a, a big adjustment or inventory um, that needs to be carried for that. The enclosure is a little bit different. It's about the same size as the Venture Pro, but we did make some upgrades here as well. So this now has, you can see the, the little door on it here. That's a translucent door that when shut provides even more protection to the XT. So before we were at a lower rated um, IP box, now we're at a higher rated box. And this one's specifically made uh, also as a NEMA 4X. That means it can withstand really harsh environments and corrosive chemicals. So it's, a, it's an improvement in the hardware of the actual enclosure. The XT, just like the Pro, is also compatible with VLink. That's our remote access product. It builds on the old version of Link software that we had back when we had the uh, Falco communication station that you plug the, the telephone line into and you could basically modem into it like an old AOL. VLink, we will touch on a little bit at the end here and kind of walk through some screenshots, but there will be a separate webinar probably towards the end of March that we'll send out to everybody to look at that will really dive deeply into VLink and its capabilities and how it works. So we'll touch on it here, kind of a teaser, and then we'll move on with that in a, at the end of March. Hardware offering output channels, we still have the same 16, 24, 32 and expansion station capability of the Venture Pro series here. And it uses the same expansion stations as the Venture Pro. And then the two and four variable speed um, triac channels that are currently used, that's the voltage chopping, small fan, pit fan, usually type of um, output channels that people use are still available. But in addition to that, uh, we also have built into the XT as a standard op, as a standard um, come along with it, a 12 analog output channel piece of hardware that I'll show you on the inside here soon too, which will give that zero to 10 volt output signal, that analog output signal to allow you to run like the VFD fans, 
uh, permanent motor fans, VFD heaters, modulating heaters, or uh, dimmable lights, that sort of thing. All of those are looking for that signal, and that's built into every version of the XT, regardless of the 16, 24, or 32s. There's also a little more history and logging information. There have been software upgrades that go along with this as well. Mostly just add-ons, things to make it even better, improvements from the, the field that we've heard that we've taken and incorporated into the XT. So opening the box up, looking inside. Hardware-wise, you can see we've got this backboard here. That's the interconnect board. It kind of ties everything together between the front, the back, the relays, and the, the uh, add-ons. That is the same. Um, so there have been multiple versions of it over time, but this same version of interconnect board that's present in the XT is the exact same one that's in the current versions of the Venture Pro. So that is not any different that way. The relay boards down here, you can see the individual relays plug and play, same as they have been with the individual fuses, snubbers, and the double pole outputs. That is the same. Same ribbon cable connects them to the interconnect board, same relay boards. There is, though, this 12-channel analog output board up at the top here. This is an option that's available for the Venture Pro that you can, you can pick up separately and add on after the fact. It comes standard on the Venture XT, and that has, as it says, 12 channels that can handle 0 to 10 volt output. So we can do 12 different um, variable speed V-fan type of operations. We can have some of them for lighting. We can have some of them for modulating heat, 12 altogether. And then underneath it, these additional inputs, that is a 14 channel analog input board um, that's not available on the Venture Pro that is again standard on the Venture XT. So we have the existing analog inputs down here, same as the Venture Pro and the digital inputs. And then we have an additional 14 channel analog input board. And this has also 12 volt and 24 volt um, basically outputs to be able to power some different sensors, which we'll touch on that are kind of unique to the Venture XT versus the Venture Pro. Switching over, you can see here, this is the inside front cover. So if you look on the back of this over here would be the relay boards and the interconnect. Here's the front. We've got the same toggle switch boards now that we have on the Pro. So that's again, a, a common component. And you can see the little interlock dip switches down here. So any channel can be assigned as a, a curtain machine channel with the safety of a physical and software interlock so that we don't send dual signals at the same time through the controller. A lot of other controls have, you know, one channel curtain assigned or this one specifically channel curtain. The Venture series has always had this ability of flexibility that anywhere we want to, we can put uh, an additional channel curtain with these interlock switches. And then the same top interlock switches that we have here that just define to the program is this uh, zero variable speed triac control or a four variable speed triac control. There is, it's a little hard to see, but right here under this red arrow, there's a tiny little um, proximity sensor that's built into the Venture XT now that's different from the Pro. And what that is, is for the backlight on the screen to keep the life of it up um, and you know just kind of conserve the, the lifespan of the screen itself. After five or 10 minutes, I kind of forget because I haven't, set here watching it lately, it will kind of dim the back screen just to give it a little longer lifespan. And because of the enclosure over the front of it, you know, to stop you from having to open that enclosure and touch it to kind of wake it up again, there's a little proximity sensor built in here that if you just come in front of it and kind of wave at your control, it'll bring to life the screen underneath it so you don't have to open up that enclosure. Seven inch LCD touchscreen, obviously different. And then the HMI board, the human machine interface board is this guy right here, kind of the brain box of the Venture series, looks very, very similar, and it's built on the same platform as the Pro, but it is a different part number. It's a different uh, board, mostly because it has these attachments for the touchscreen, the proximity sensor, and then it has this big daughter board on it, which is the video driver um, for the entire display. So looks similar, but a different piece from the Venture Pro. So with that 14 analog input sensor board that we talked about having that plus 12 and plus 24 volt um, output to run some different sensors, the software is currently built into the XT and that uh, sensor board allows you to hook up some other things like in this case, the carbon monoxide sensor, carbon dioxide sensor, and even the uh, Dole 53 ammonia sensor. So giving you a little more ability to dive deeper into what's actually happening in the barn. Uh, we still have the ability to input, you know, the temperature sensors, outside temp sensor, 
temp and wind speed for the natural hog barns, um, you know, the curtain sided 1100 style barns, and the uh, humidity sensors, which does humidity ties in very closely with ammonia and carbon dioxide. But now you have the ability to go, you know, one step even more uh, so into analyzing the atmosphere inside those barns and really seeing what's happening on, a, on an hour by hour basis. And the sensitivity of them is, uh, I think it's zero to 500 on the carbon monoxide up to about 10,000 parts per million for the carbon dioxide, and then between zero and 100 parts per million on the ammonia set. So very sensitive, but also with the range that you need to really handle a modern um, confined animal livestock building. So we'll go through a few screens here before we kind of do the live hands-on. For navigating the XDA, I kind of want to show you a little bit more in depth some of the things here where it's a little easier to show. And we've got, uh, we took pictures of one that had a little more data in it. And the first thing just to bring up is that we do still have all of the buttons that you're familiar with and use today for navigating the Venture Pro two line display. You know, so the left to right still carries you through that loop of the menu structure like it did before plus and minus, cancel and enter for making changes, and the little kind of quick keys here for getting, you know, jumping to a certain area. But none of those are needed in order to operate the Ventra XT, you know, soup to nuts. They're just, they're there as a familiarity. They're there as a backup, if you will, just in case. Um, but they're a little bit extraneous at this point. It's more just people's comfort levels and how they like to navigate. But having this large screen gave us so much more ability to consolidate and condense um, the data that we're presenting and navigate around it made it a lot easier. Once you sort of get the hang of it or get into it, I find myself using the keys less and less and less. So zoom in on the home screen here and you can see it kind of has a lot more of the environmental conditions at a glance right off the bat. So here you can see a little outside temp sensor, set point, working temperature, along with the min and max values for the day so far relative humidity, same thing, static pressure, same thing, if there's water meters, and then up to your 12 air sensors, you know, for each zone. And you can see up at the top, you know, we've got kind of the zone, the parameter set, date, time, and then some of the data that you input about, you know, today's age, head count, if there's mortality, calculated weight. And then you can see here too, the kind of quick step buttons to the menu hotkeys, which is sort of the overview of everywhere we can go or directly to alarms. And then this is also it because it's a, a touch screen, but it's also gesture enabled. You can also just kind of instead of left and right, you can swipe left to right to move through that circle of the top level menu commands. And then the alarms tab is where you would it would drive you right to the alarm history detail page and show you active alarms, cancel alarms, most recent 20 and any error details. And we'll the alarms will kind of get a little more in depth on later. So you can see here if we went from this one and touched on, let's say the menu hotkeys from our main screen, that would bring us to an overview of just about all of the top level menus that you would usually have scrolled left to right to find. Um, there's one or two like global parameter settings, which is a subset of system control device setup. That's kind of where you change languages. That one's not directly on here, but pretty much all of the big ones are. Um, and if you do want to change languages, you know, you can go through the, the touch screen. Otherwise, the, the plus and minus, if you hit that at the same time, that is still a toggle between English and Spanish. So the XT, like the Pro, has that quick change between languages and has English and Spanish as well. So top left here, you'll notice a little cancel button. That's kind of the, the back button, same as hitting cancel. You know, we always talk about hitting cancel three times to get back to the home screen on the Venture Pro. Cancel is always taking you kind of one step up in the XT menu structure as well. So if I went from here and let's say I hit on output devices, that would take me to the device channels. And you'll see this is device channels for module one. Um, expansion stations were always a little tough to navigate in the prior versions of the Venium, the XT, or the Venium and the Pro leading up to the XT. Now, because we've got this extra screen room, we've got previous module, next module. So here is module one, which is in this case, a 32 channel controller. And same as it's laid out on the, the switches, you can see one through eight, nine through 16, all the way to 32. And this is, this is my hotkeys. This is what you know I had before down on next to my switches. Now I've got them all right here to get to. And if I get to module two, that would show me what's on my analog uh, output board. So if I have any of those variable speed fans, they would show up there very easily. If I had an expansion station, that would actually show up, I think it's module four. Um, 
and onwards if we had more expansion stations. So you can easily switch between those two or hit cancel, takes you back up one level. You know, if we want to hit the input button, that would take us over here and we can get into the details for, you know, your actual air sensor settings, which this one's a lot easier than it ever used to be on the, the previous versions of the Ventra. So it's a really nice way when you're doing setup to be able to get in here and make the changes that you need to. One thing you'll notice as well is that, you know, we've got this grayed out one down at the bottom. So because we have more options with the, the color touchscreen, if it's uh, available to be changed, it's in the black. If it's not available to be changed, it's grayed out. This one's grayed out because we can see we've got it saying use for wind speed. No, it's not a wind speed sensor, so we don't have to worry about count values. But it shows you that they're there. If you turn this to yes, this would become black, and then we can make that change. This is air sensor number one, and same as before with the plus and minus keys, it's a little shortcut just to get to air sensor two, three, four, up to 12. Back here, if we wanted to look at the controller information, first button gives us our passwords. And if you want to save your configuration, you know, before there was a little um, shortcut in the keys where you'd hit cancel three times, down once, and enter. Well, now you can just physically press the save configuration and you'll see the little enter key pops up and it'll save it just like that. If we have alarms back on your main screen, which is where it kind of always goes back to in a resting state, this alarms will be outlined in red. And any active alarms, if you click on it, will come up and show in red as well. And then clicking on that alarm pops up the little enter button so we can clear that alarm and then it goes down into history. So it's pretty easy to see that you have an alarm from a distance up close. It's pretty easy to get to the details and it's pretty easy to clear it. Looking at the history, talked about before that there's a few different things in there. So a lot of this is the same and it's, we've always had really good history logging um, inside of the, the Ventures line. And we bring that up in the summary system in the, differently in, in some good ways, but the history itself goes hour by hour, day by day. The thing that's new in here is that we've added in each individual air sensor that we have is now also logging that data, the low, the high, and the average for that hour, and also what it read every 10 minutes during that hour. So this really gives us the ability to kind of pinpoint how that barn is doing. If we have a tunnel barn, what does it look like at temp sensor one at the pool pads versus you know temp sensor four all the way at the tunnel end? If we have a large barn and we might have some dead air zones we're concerned about, we can really start to pinpoint how that barn is doing and look at it historically too, not just when you're in the barn kind of looking at the individual temp sensor readings like we used to do. So some of the things history wise, uh, and this is this is a lot to, to go through here, but you can see that most of this stuff we are keeping hourly and we're keeping it, you know, a lot of the other controllers on the market, you, know, you see the, the Chortronics too, and some of the early Rotoms, they would have anywhere from a 14 day to a 60 day to 75 days of history. And then they'd start kind of flushing out or losing those hourly run times. We're keeping all of that stuff. And I mean, we might have decades of data that we can keep inside the XD. The limit is really what's on that SD card. And that XD card comes with eight gig of storage. So it's years that we can keep. And that's always in there for you. And then the other really nice thing that's always stood out with the venture line of controls and carries through into the XT is kind of this forensic data that we always look at. So people have um, manual switches on all their controllers. We keep track of whether or not people switched it on, off, or auto. People make changes to parameter sets. We date stamp and keep track of that. When the controllers restarted or if there are gaps in the data, we keep track of all that. So all of that stuff's in there and really comes in handy when you're trying to figure out, hey, we had a bad production run. Hey, we had you know something terrible happen and we had an animal loss. How do we go through and really figure out what was going on in that barn? We've, we've got all that data we always have. So I talk about you know the Venture Pro, that this is the, the next generation, the next iteration of it. This chart kind of gives you the, the big bullet point takeaways of what's changed and what's improved and what's different with the XT versus the Pro. And this is the first one too, you can kind of see this cover, this translucent cover that uh, keeps everything a little bit safer. Also keeps you from breaking your, your switches too, when people get a little too close to the box here, um, there's a tendency to smash one of these switches, which can cause just inadvertently on or off of your device, or it can actually break a toggle switch and lead to an expensive repair. This thing keeps it all safer, as well as making all the components inside really well sealed against uh, the gases inside the barn. So the big things here, takeaways, 
analog outputs, they're optional in the Pro, they're baked into the XT. Analog inputs, the 14 is the limit and it does not accommodate those um, 12 and 24 volt sensors. 28 in the XT standard does accommodate the extra sensors. Protective door, yes. Channel hotkeys are on screen. <coughs> Excuse me, touch screen. Obvious difference. Gas sensor capable. We talked about it. Ammonia, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. And then the bigger or, or the better enclosure that it has as well. Notice too, we also talked, both of them do have V-Link capability. So quick teaser on V-Link. Jumping a little bit off of the XT. V-Link is the PC resident. It's the laptop software that allows you to check out any of the connected controls that you have across your network. So there's a V-Link node. There's a physical little box of hardware. It's basically just a, a modem and router that we offer that you can link you know, 30 different controls on one farm site, if you had that many, into this one node. And then that node plugs in, just like your router at home does, to a, a cat 5 e cable and Ethernet cable. And then if you have that available on site, that gets you to the internet. It's really nice because it's, uh, it's plug and play. So instead of you having to provide a router, you having to figure out how to get into your router, um, you having to figure out how to open ports in your router, which then also leaves your whole network now a little bit uh, open to access from you know, malicious external people. This thing is just a self-contained unit. It pings out automatically, kind of finds the mothership. We maintain our own secure FTP site in the cloud. Your data is just kind of handshake authenticated up to there, locked down in something for just you. And then from VLink, you would access that data and be able to pull it down just for kind of your controllers based on your serial numbers and your passwords and your locations. Um, one thing that people will ask you know, with V-Link specifically is, is what is it available for? Can I get it on the Pro? Can I get it on my old Venture Plus 12 channel? Um, the answer is yes, depending on you know, what level of software you have. So if you have a Venture Pro with the white backlight, you know the little two-line display is kind of whitish, bluish looking, that one works with V-Link across the board. If you have the older version of the Venture Pro, it's more greenish yellow of a backlight. Um, that one you need to have at least 1.06 for version two or higher. And then if you're running one of the old small 12 channel Venture Pluses, that needs at least this uh, 6R08 software level. This does not work on Ventians at all. Uh, not made for that, not designed for that. If you look at V-Link on the, the laptop, this is the, the screen of it. So because we have an even bigger screen here, we kind of put a lot more data in it. But you can see this one is actually our technician, Matt. He's got an Office XT and an Office Venture Pro. And this little tree structure on the left, just like you know, in Windows, where you've got your C drive and your desktop and everything else. Same concept here. Here I've got my Zone 1 devices. So you can see I've got all these fans attached to this control. I've got inlets. I've got brooders, cool pads. I've got my sensors. And if I click on any one of those, it would give me all of the programming data for it. You know, what's it operating as? Does it have a timer? Um, when's its full-on temperature? But right now, we're just looking at the Zone devices at the top level. And so that's telling me my controller serial number, date and time, and then working temp, outside temp, humidity, static pressure, water meters, and then kind of the added glance, what's running and what isn't. So I've got feeder run, feeder one is running, lights are on, sidewall fan number one is switched off. So physically that little toggle switch is thrown. Stir fan number two is being overridden as well because it's switched on. Very heaters are running like they're supposed to. And then you can see down here the curtain inlet openings as well. So all this data is in here. And the nice thing about VLink is that it's not just for looking at, you can actually change parameters, uh, change the settings if you want to and push that out. And it's got a really good secure way. It kind of makes a backup first, changes everything, vets it versus the backup and then lets it go or it comes back and tells you that it can't. And you can take all of the data out of here and it has some graphing built in. Otherwise you can dump the whole thing into a text file or an Excel file or a PDF. So it's really good that way to pull all your data from multiple sites to one place and dump it into, if you're using like an Excel-based spreadsheet already or a CSV to go into some sort of ERP system, you can do that with this. It's also really nice for us because if you've got VLink and you have issues, our tech support can much more easily, you know, with your permission, get into that site and help you walk through it, even if you're standing right there in front of the control. 
So that's kind of the uh, presentation that I have there. I do want to jump over and just show you a couple hands on things. So what I will do is I'll stop sharing my screen. Excuse me. And then uh, because I've got a separate camera set up, if you look kind of in the, the different people and the participants to ever kind of find in there, there's uh, someone in there called, I think it's XT, what I got in here is. Should have an XT display that if you pin that, you'll be able to see the video. Yep, it's called Venture XT. So if you go up to the little three dots on that and if you pin it, it'll make it big for you. And you'll be able to see what we're walking through that way. So jumping over to the XT, hopefully everybody can see that and has figured out how to big it by it. You can see right now very dimly, you see mostly the reflection of the, the little camera phone that's stuck up there because that screen has been sitting there long enough that it's shut itself down and it's saving its backlight. If you look really closely, you can see that, you know, it's got a set point of 70 degrees. But if I come over and touch the, you know, put my hand in front of the little proximity sensor, which I would do in front of the doorway if it was the, the, the enclosure, if it was there, it comes back to life. And so again, I've got my keys and the keys do work like they always have worked, you know, left and right gets me through my menu structure like it always has. Cancel gets me back to my home screen, but I really don't need any of those. I'm just gonna work mostly on the screen itself. So right now I have an alarm, probably because I don't have any alarm sensors hooked up for it. So it's telling me that I have some sort of issue with my high low temperature count because I have nothing there. But if I wanna clear that alarm, I just tap on it and I can enter and it's gonna clear itself out. It will of course come back. You can see it's counting up right now because I still don't have a temperature sensor that it's looking for. And so now it, once it hits 10, it's telling me, hey, it's still a problem. One of the really nice things though, is that whereas before, because we didn't have this nice big screen and we didn't have the red alarm here, um, if I had an active alarm, it would always every, I think 10 seconds, take me back to that alarm screen and say, you know, the little two line display, hey, you've got an alarm, which is good. I wanna know about it. But if I was in the middle of programming something and it jumped me out of it, as an installer, it would drive me crazy. So that was a really nice fix that now when there's alarms, they're easy to see. This is the default screen that it comes back to if you leave it alone long enough, you know, for the backlight to conserve itself, but it's not kicking you out of the middle of programming anymore if there's an active alarm. So menu hotkeys takes us to that kind of overview of all of the top level menu items that I can go to. So if I wanted to change anything with my output devices, you know, I don't have very many in here, but tunnel fan one, you can see all of the settings here. These ones are grayed out. This is grayed out because I have it set for temperature only. If I wanted to change that to temp and timed, now all of a sudden my on and off timer are available and I can make those changes. Hit enter and I could put in that I want it to be 140. I don't know why I'd have an hour and 40, it'd probably be more like five minutes on and maybe 10 minutes off. So pretty straightforward, easy to set. Cancel takes me one level up. If I have anything on the next module, so in this case, this is module two, and I have a variable speed output. That's a zero to 10 volt variable speed fan on that one. Is that clear enough to see? Hope so. So if I clicked on that, that would take me to that one's operating mode. And so I can look at, you know, power on setting, full on setting. And this is for use with specifically not my, not my triac fans, not my little fans, like I used to use with the output channels, those would show up back here in my previous module. But this is for like the, the variable fans that have the built-in VFDs that are really much, much, much more efficient than any of the prior versions of those little triac fans. Um, we've had a webinar on V fans. Uh, it's definitely something that you should look into if you're not that familiar with it, but you can get like 60 CFM per watt type of uh, efficiencies out of some really big fans running at slow speeds with these new uh, motors and variable frequency drives that are, are built in and use that zero to 10 volt analog output signal compared to those older triac fans, which really we would voltage starve them or voltage chop them to regulate that speed down. And they became terribly inefficient when that happened. And they also lost a lot of torque. So they were really prone to wind effects. Whereas the newer fans and newer motors, keep a constant torque up and down the entire span 
uh, pretty much of, of their RPMs. So anyway, that's how we navigate through those. If we want to look at our input devices. This is where you get into the actual back end of, you know, uh, what am I using this for? Do I have, let's say, I'm trying to look at both screens at the same time here. Do I have a zero to five volt or a zero to 10 volt? You can change the input source type. And like with the ammonia sensor specifically, that one has a consumable insert. So they usually last between two and three years. Some people say they get a little longer. Some people just say they want to change it as a preventative maintenance thing. So you can actually go ahead and put in an expiration date and this will throw up a little reminder for you. Like, hey, it's been 24 months. It's probably time to look at, you know, replacing the insert in your ammonia sensor. So that's in there as well. Other things that you'd want to, so we talked about left and right too. If you want to, you know, you can use those left and right keys to navigate around. You can just use these buttons to navigate around. You can also just swipe to move one level over just like you would with the left and right before. And if you have multiple things that you might be looking at, uh, I don't know if I've got a good screen that has it for us. Let's see here. I don't think I have enough stuff programmed in, but you can also swipe up and down or use the page up, page down buttons to kind of see everything at a glance that you might want to. Hour by hour, I don't think I have too many things in here, but there's your history reply for hour by hour. And the other nice thing too, is that, you know, when we do talk about making changes, instead of having to press and hold, you know, the plus button for a really long time to get something all the way up, you know, it has with the bigger screen, we have the ability now to just type in what we want. And so we can go up to 70 degrees if we wanted to. A lot quicker than how it used to be able to work. Okay, so back out of this, cancel three times. Um, it's really not much else to it. It's really nicely intuitive, whereas the Pro and the Game Track and the Ventium lines have always had really, really phenomenal logic and ability to control the atmosphere in the barn well through RH monitoring and purge cycles through the interlocks of heaters and curtains and curtains and fans um, through shared sensor technology. All that stuff has been really good, but it's always been really hard to figure it out and navigate it. And it's tough for, for people to learn coming into an organization just because of the limitations of that small screen. The XT has really done a good job of making all of that stuff much more intuitive, much easier to get your head around without making it too big of a change to be able to carry the XT line or add the XT line into an existing structure that has a lot of pros because there's a lot of the same parts in it because the logic is so similar. And all that we've done is added additional features to be able to keep up with the way that we're raising animals today with the newer stuff. So with that said, I think we'll jump over Kayla to the Q and A. All right, yeah, I had a couple questions come in while you were giving the presentation. Uh, the first question was approximate cost of the CO sensor and how many feet of airspace can effectively monitor? Oh, good question. Um, so the cost is an easy one. It's, you know, probably going to be in the neighborhood of $250 or so would be my, my best guess for it. Uh, the airspace one is a little tougher because it really depends how well you're mixing the air in the airspace. So if you have you know, a really still barn, it's going to be really good at detecting things within, you know, 10 to 20 feet of it from an airspace. If we're keeping that air well mixed with circulation fans or, you know, well designed air inlets and minimum ventilation parameters, you know, it's going to have a much better ability to see that. But that's really barn by barn specific. We're set up to, you know, handle one of the, the CO sensors. So I would propose that it would go in the middle of the barn and do your best to design that ventilation scheme such that you don't have a lot of dead airspace and we're keeping a constant stirring or mixing of that air. It has other benefits too, because we really don't want all the heat in minimum ventilation just resting at the top of that barn. We want it down towards the bottom. In a natural barn, it's a little trickier, um, but we tend not to worry as much about carbon monoxide in natural barns. Perfect. All right, next question was, will current Venture Pro models be made obsolete to change towards standardizing the XT? There are no plans for that uh, presently. The Pro is still a, a good model. It does share a lot of the same underpinnings. Um, 
So eventually, sure, but nothing right now in, is in the works for that or planned for that. All right, next question. How to toggle between zones as opposed to modules? So I don't have multiple zones set up on this, but there is a, a zone plus and minus button as well. Um, the modules is really just when you're in the, the output devices that you're looking at that. But when you have a, multiple zones, a zone button comes up too. Otherwise, there is also, as discussed before, you know, you've got the zone button still exists here, but it's also going to be on the screen. All right. How do I change parameter sets? Is there a through the screen now? Is it through the screen now? Um, yes and no. You change parameter sets the same way that you've always had to. You do need to cycle the power to the control because when it goes through the boot loading process is when it has the ability to say, all right, well, I'm going to look at the SD card and pick a different parameter set as opposed to loading up out of uh, you know, the onboard memory. So you cycle the power, but then, yeah, everything is on the screen. So there's no magic button combination you have to press or anything like that. Um, when you cycle power, the first thing it says is, you know, do you want to do this? You know, press the enter button on the screen. Uh, or on the side, and then you can change parameters. That's the same as you always have. Next one, do the ammonia or CO2 sensors affect ventilation? And if so, how? Right now they do not. Uh, right now you can, I don't know if you saw it on the screen here, but you can set an alarm for each of them. So it's for historical logging right now, and it's for alarming so that you can see if you're getting above a certain threshold. Um, but at present, it's not changing the ventilation scheme based on what it, re what it reads on those. So it's got just this ability here to set an alarm for high and low and an alarm delay time. All right. Uh, next one. Do I have to latch the door all the time or can I leave it open? Uh, you, can, you can do either, but I would really recommend you do keep it closed because it, it's there for a reason. And if you want your controller to last as long as it should last, uh, keeping it closed is going to help that a lot more than leaving it open. It does have um, a large day. It does have a, a gasket around this one. So this is without the door closed right now. This screen is still gasketed to keep everything inside safer. But um, you know the door is there to give it the rating that it's actually got. So I would suggest latching it. All right. Next question: What happens if the screen stops working? So there's a lot of ways that a screen can stop working. Um, not that we intend to ever have it stop working for you, but if you know the the touch screen part of it stops working and for whatever reason you you know it's just not responding to your button pushes, that is a nice reason why we have all of the buttons that the Venture Pro has the actual you know physical buttons off to the right. You can still do everything with the buttons without needing the screen for anything, just the same as you can do everything with the screen without needing the buttons for anything. Um, so that's kind of that step to it. If the screen itself like completely just died and you couldn't see anything and it didn't have any button pushes, but you know it was just because the cord got ripped on the inside or you know the screen got smashed or something like that, the HMI, the actual processor is still running. That barn's still going to run and you could still theoretically you know get in there with VLink and control everything that way. So everything's going to keep going just like normal. It's just you're going to need a new screen. Um, or the screen could die because you know the whole controller, died in which case you know if it's like the, the brain of the controller died then the relay boards and the interconnect basically look at whatever the last command was and it keeps running based on that for safety's sake or if the whole controller dies then hope you have thermostats and, the, and an agro alert which would be really good fantastic um so this is the last question that i have so far that's been sent in uh does it keep the history of ammonia and humidity sensors Yes. All right. Otherwise, I will thank you all. I appreciate you taking the time um, to come and listen into this, and I hope it was valuable to you. And if you do have questions, reach out to Kayla, and they will make their way to me and the rest of the team. And we'll be getting out the recording uh, hopefully sometime yet this week. Take care, everyone.